This is Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Trust your deeds to Jehovah and your mind will be set in place. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a Mother's Day today. I see all these beautiful mothers sitting here among us. And I just want to tell you that I am very thankful for all of you. You are all beautiful examples of, of love in my life, and I'm thankful for you. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, going on 34 years since I laid eyes on my mother, so it's a, it's a difficult day to go through sometimes, but we make it. Go ahead. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Turn that down a little bit. The risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to 
whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who you now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the Lord. All things are possible. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. I may not face the lion, but I've got my own giant. Oh God, my.
In and out of situations The tug of war at me All day long I struggle For answers that I need Then I come into His presence all my questions become clear And for that sacred moment No doubt can interfere In the presence of Jehovah God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the prayer. love the Lord provided a place for us to rest a place to find the answers in the hour of distress now there's never any reason Give up in despair Just slip away and breathe His name He will surely meet you there In the
in the presence of the King. Let's go. your authority we can stand in your love oh Lord strengthen our hearts Lord let us be strong and create courageous let us not bow or bend to the enemy but let us stand strong and let our warfare be valiant. Not because of anything we are or what we do, but because who you are. And Lord, that we stand in the army of the Lord. And Father, we just give you praise and glory for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen? Um, glad to see everybody here this morning. I'm excited about today I would say happy Mother's Day and uh, there's a young fella in the back that I really appreciate and I would have him pre preach this morning but he looks like old man wobble weeble so uh, I won't we need to pray for Ron uh, he's having some back problems he hasn't been able to do anything since the last trip he took with me and I did not do anything uh, yeah, that's what they are. Yeah, see, they're all, all blaming me. Yeah. Even even his son blames me, uh, you know. God is my witness. I did not do it. Um, but uh, be praying for them. We we're, we're continue to thank you for the healing in Pat's life and in Deb's life and in what you're doing in, in that. Um, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you. All you mothers there, not all of you, because men, you're not mothers. Sorry. Can't, can't happen. Uh, won't ever happen. If it does, you'll be an awful rich man. I, um, I was praying about this morning and taking a few minutes to speak to the mothers, but also to speak to the, the men this morning and those women that, that are not mothers um, about what, I needed to ask the Lord about. And I, I went to Proverbs 31, and I thought, oh, you know, this is, everybody knows Proverbs 31, a virtuous woman. And I said, Lord, I need something that just sits into my spirit and gets in, ingrained into me that is your word, for the mothers in the church this morning, and not only for the mothers in the church, but that would minister to each and every one of us. And how many of you know when you ask God for something, he'll answer? Yes. And uh, I, I asked the Lord for that, and I, I sat before, and I had, I've been reading through uh, the Old Testament, and in some of my readings, I came on Second Kings this week. In chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. Now, I very seldom just stick with one chapter. But this morning, can, can I stick with just two stories from chapter 4 uh, this morning? Because I want to deal with four characteristics. Four characteristics of a godly woman, of godly women. And as I looked at this, I said, wow. And I, how many of you have ever read, read through the Bible, read through the Bible, and, then, and I've done it several times, but all of a sudden 
something just hit you like it's never hit you before. And uh, being Mother's Day and thinking about mothers, I read this and I, I went back and read it again. And then I read it again. And I said, why do I keep coming back to this? I'm trying to get through 2 Kings and the Lord's taking me back to the same chapter. Well, I felt almost like the story of the new pastor in a church. And, and several of you have heard this before. New pastor came to the church. He, he spoke a message and the people said, oh man, this new pastor, he's just great. Well, the second week he came, he spoke the same message. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I got a little bit more out of it. You know, I'm, I'm, third week he did the same thing. Fourth week he did the same thing. And the people are starting now. is this the only thing that he can preach? So the elders got together and they were going to confront him. So they confronted him and they said, is this the only message you have? And the pastor looked at him and in all seriousness and sincerity said, no. Well, why don't you speak another message? He says, when you get this one right, I'll go to the next one. And the attitude is getting something right. And I felt like the Lord taking me back because he wanted me to get something right and of value from the word. So 2 Corinthians 4 talks about four characteristics of a godly woman, and it's two different stories. And I'm going to read, and I'll skip a few verses along the way, but the first, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7 says this, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take away my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Keep that question. I want you to ask the question, What do you have in your house? And I'm not talking about physical house. I'm talking about this house. What do you have in your house? Okay. And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from your neighbors, empty vessels, and do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you, you and your sons, and pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her, her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil Pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. Minister to our hearts this morning. Encourage us. Show us. Move upon us. Let us know that we know that we know that you our God. And Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The widow is desperate. Desperate. How many have ever been in a desperate situation? Not knowing what to do. How many of you ever been to the point where the bills are coming due and you don't know where the answer's coming from? This was so desperate that 
the wife of one of the sons of the prophets came to Elisha and he says, I can't pay my bills. I, I don't have anything. And my two sons are going to become slaves. They're going to be thrown into prison. And that's going to kill me. A mother's heart is for their children. Much more than a father's heart is for their children. Why? There's a special connection between a mother and a child. And this mother was looking at it and saying, what's going on? What's going on? And I don't understand, Lord. I've served you all my life, and I have nothing. And I can't pay my bills. So she goes to Elisha and says to Elisha, I'm in deep trouble. She was openly confessing. And Elisha says, what do you got in your house? Just a little bit of oil. I don't have much. Ladies, you may not think you have much. You just have just a little bit of oil. But a little is a lot in God's eyes. A little is a lot in God's eyes. Which brings me to the first characteristic of a godly woman. A godly woman is one who is obedient to the Lord. The woman who is obedient to the Lord. Lord, I've served you. I've served you. I may just have a little. But I've served you to the best of my ability. And now the world's crashing down on me. I'm caught in the middle. What do I do? And Elisha says, go take and find all the vessels you can. How many empty vessels you got? Well, I've got a couple. Well, get, get more. And by a vessel, this is the interesting thing about that. It wasn't a little jar. It was a vessel. And the vessel here is about the same as the big barrels that Jesus turned the wine into. So it wasn't just a little bit. It was a lot. There's an old song that says, Little is much when God is in it. And the Lord starts to move and she goes in and she closes the door and she pours the vessels. And she pours it out and believe it or not, the, the oil keeps coming. Keeps coming. I am going to say something that I've never said before. And the Lord showed me something. You can get blood out of a turnip. What do I mean? If God is in it, He can bring things out of you that you don't think can happen. And as I begin to look at this from verse 7, it says the man of God said, Okay, now, now that all of these things, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Let me tell you, when God is in something, God is getting ready to do something. Not only does he give you enough to pay your debt, but he gives you enough to live on the rest of your life. Be obedient. And that doesn't go for just mothers. That goes for every one of us. Obedient to the Lord. Being obedient. Which brings me to the second thought. The second one is the woman who is sensitive to the Lord. Being sensitive. Guys, I hate to tell you this, but our sensitivity level 
compared to a woman's or a mother's is dull. We are not sensitive by any means. You know, let, let, let's be honest. We're, we're not that sensitive. Mother's heart are sensitive and then I, I begin to look at this and I begin to see something that in the next story starting in verse 8 he runs across a woman who is sensitive now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunan where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he buy, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall, and let us put up a bed for him there, and a table and a chair for, and a lampstand, so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room. Then he said to his servant, call the Shumanite woman. And when he called her, she stood before him. And as she stood before him, and I, I miss verse 13 there, I, I don't know why, but he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gazia, his servant, answered, actually she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, About this time next year, you will embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord. Man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time has come of which Elijah has told her. Sensitive. She was sensitive to the needs and the Lord spoke to her. The prophet's going to come by. You need to have some food for him. The prophet's going to come by. Well, not only do you need to do this. And she expanded that ministry. And she ministered to the prophet Elijah. All the while being sensitive to what the Lord has. Listening to the Lord. When we are obedient, we will listen. And we will become sensible, or <clears throat> not sensible, <clears throat> sensitive to what the Lord has for us. That word sensitive is an interesting word. It means to be pliable. To be pliable. Are you pliable before the Lord this morning? Are you listening to what the Lord has for you? Are you asking God where my little piece in this whole thing that God is doing is? Because you have a place. And you have a peace. And I wish, and I had thought about it, and I forgot to, to ask. Maybe she has it with her. Uh, Gene, I'm going to throw you under the bus again. Not, not in a bad way this time. Okay. Gina, uh, the Lord gave her a vision and a sketch, and, and she etched it out. You don't have that with you, do you? Okay. I, I, I meant to ask her to bring it. And basically, as she told me, I haven't seen the, the etching yet, but I'm, I'm excited about seeing it. And the Lord is dealing with me about maybe getting that and blowing it up and putting it in the back to remind every one of us that we are a part of the foundation of what God's doing in this place. You are a part of the foundation. As a mother, you are a part of the foundation of the home. And actually, 
you are the cornerstone of the home. And I began to look at these things and I began to see some things. Now it went on and I'm going to skip a few verses down to 26. And I'm, like I've said, I'm not going to speak long. I'm going to let you mothers out early. This is my Mother's Day present to you. This is my promise. I want you to go down to 26 verse. And guys, listen. It's all right for you, just because we're talking about Mother's Day this morning, I'm going to say this to the men, okay? It's all right for you to be obedient and sensitive. I was ter taught as a child, a man doesn't cry. Hold that in. Be macho. Cause yourself ulcers in your old age. That's what it does. Then I read of Jeremiah, who's called the weeping prophet. And I said, wait a minute, this, this thing about obedience and sensitivity has something to it for men just as well as women. So the Shumanite woman has a son. And that son begins to grow. And one day he goes out in the field to be with his father. And he gets out there and he says, my head, my head. From all descriptions, and I, and I, I am conjecturing here, I don't have any positive... From all, all the descriptions that I see, it seems like it's a sunstroke that he has. And as he has that sunstroke, he's taken up to his mother and is put in his mother's lap for about three or four hours and the child dies. Did she give up? No. Never give up when the world or the enemy said your dream is over. See, the third thing is, and the third aspect of this, is the godly woman will not accept defeat. And women, I'm going to say something to you at the risk of offending the men. Okay, and guys, if you don't like it, pray about it. And if you really get mad about it, forgive me. But then you got to talk to the Lord about it. I believe in my heart that women are a lot more tenacious than men. They have a more tenacious attitude when it comes to spiritual things. They will not accept things as they are. I spent some time with a couple. And uh, at, at the convention that we were, were just at, and, and I love this couple, and... Uh, I'll mention their name, Chris and Shirley Von Holten. And I was talking to them, gosh, not at this conference, but a long time ago, and she said something that, that really stuck in my craw. She would say that Chris would get something going on, and he would just say, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And she would come by and she would say, I'll pray about it. Now, if any of you would know Shirley, she's an avid prayer. She believes in prayer. And she said, many of time in our ministry, when Chris got to the point where he was fed up, I had to pray him through. 
And I'm going to tell you something. That happens in this place. You know, you don't hear a lot from Becky, but she prays us through and prays me through. Because there have been times where I've liked to choke people. And God has called, I've got to go to prayer. I've got to pray about this because my husband's an idiot. Uh, you know, let's, let's face it, guys. Sometimes we, we uh, get the wrong end going first. You know, the cart before the horse. You know, let's just kill them until God, they died, you know. Type attitude. But this woman would not accept defeat. So she goes to Elisha and she says this conversation. She's on her way and she says, please run now to meet her. This is Elisha telling Gizei. It is, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And listen to the third one. Is it well with the child? And she answered what? It is well. Now let me tell you something. If my child was dead, I don't think I'd have the faith to say it's well. I'd be angry. I, why didn't you keep this promise? Why, what's going on? God, God, why did you even ca cause me to have this child in the first place if you were going to kill it? But she did not speak to the prophet that way. She says, everything's well. I'm not going to accept defeat. I'm not going to accept defeat. I'm going to believe God. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Hazai came near to push her away, but the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I not ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? God, what did you promise me? What did you promise me? Look at that. What faith. I'm not going to accept this. Didn't you say that the Lord was going to give me a son? I am going to stand on the word of God. You that have children. And I'm not talking just moms. I'm talking to fathers. I'm talking if you have brothers or sisters, siblings, whatever. You who have them, stand on the word of God that they are coming to the Lord. Because the Lord has promised you and your house will serve the Lord. Start believing the word of God. She believed the word of the Lord. Don't deceive me, Lord. I love this. Don't deceive me. Don't renege on your promise. What has God promised you? Some of you, God's promised things years and years and years ago. You have not seen the fruit of them. Let me tell you something. Believe them. Their promise is not dead. It's getting ready to happen. But you need to take hold of faith. Do not deceive me. Then he, he said to Gacy, I get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, don't greet them. If anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. Now, there's two things that I want you to notice about this before I go and, and Elisha gets there. Number one, she had faith 
Where did she lay the child? She laid it in the bed of the prophet. She laid him in the hands of the man of God. That's what they had to do. They had to go to the prophets and lay him in the Old Testament in the hand of God. You have Jesus. How many of you would say this morning that some of the promises in your life, some of the things in your life, you need to take to Jesus and you need to lay them in the hands of Jesus? You hear what I'm saying? Lay them in the hands of Jesus. And Elisha says, I can't get there fast enough. But you go with her and you, you put your the, my rod on his forehead. Sometimes we reach out to God and we don't get an answer right away. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Sometimes we think he's late. But he's never late. He's always on time. Mary and Martha thought Jesus was late when he came to Lazarus' tomb. God, he's been dead four days. Let me tell you something. God has authority over death. And he spoke to him and he said, remove the stone. And Lazarus came forth and here come Lazarus. Let me tell you something. Some of you have some things in your life and promises in your life and things that, are, that you have seen dead that you are, think are in the grave. But Jesus is about ready to make your way to the, the tomb where you've laid all those promises and say, come forth. And allow him to come forth. And allow the promises of God in your life that he has given you to come forth. The gifts and the, pre uh, the, <clears throat> the gifts of God that he has given you to come forth. And then down in the 33rd verse, Elisha finally gets there. And it brings me to the fourth one. That is the woman who walks in miracles through faithfulness. Through faithfulness. That one time in this whole story, and this is what got me, and I had a hard time with it at first, but I, I don't anymore. That one time... Did that mother say one negative thing? Our negativity stops miracles. Our attitude of unbelief stops God from working through us in the miraculous and the powerful in his presence. Look at 33. He went in therefore and shut the door behind the two of them and he prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth and his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands as he stretched himself on the child and the flesh of the child became warm. I have heard more than one time when God begins to do something and I've heard it explained this time. I don't know what happened, but I felt warm all over. How many of you know what I'm saying? I knew that the healing came and I just felt the warmth come. That's the life-giving power of the Spirit coming in and working through you and starting to raise up that which was gone. 
And that child became warm. Mom's not even there. Mom's downstairs. But she's believing God. Oh God, right now. God of Israel. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come and help the prophet. Fulfill your promise. Lord, I'm going to be faithful to this. And I'm going to be faithful to this. Now, Father, you promised me if I was faithful, you'd show me the miracle. And 35 says he returned and walked back and forth in the house. And went up again and stretched himself upon him. Then the child sneezed seven times and the eyes of the ch and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shumanite woman. So he called her. And when she came in, he said the marvelous words. Pick up your son. And they went on their way. What I'm saying to you this morning is four very simple, simple things. Number one, be sensitive, be obedient. Be obedient. Whatever God calls you to do, do. In obedience. How do, I, how do you know when God's calling you to do something? You want me to tell you how you know when God's calling you to do something? You usually do it kicking and screaming. How many of you know what I'm saying? God will call you to do the things that you don't want to do so that you, you will know that you'll be obedient in the things that you need to do. Obedient. And then be sensitive. Listen. Listen. I made a point of telling you all along that in early, they used to teach in schools. I'm not sure if they teach it anymore. When you come to a corner, the first thing you do is stop. You don't just play on your phone and walk right through the corner like they do today. The second thing you do is look. Well, they can't look because they're too busy in their phone. And the third thing you do is listen. Well, they can't listen because they're too involved in what's coming out of the garbage. What is that phone today a symbol of? It's a symbol of the world and the enemy and all that it comes around. The greatest tool, and I said it a couple weeks ago, I'll say it again, one of the greatest tools of the enemy is the cell phone. And believe me, I say that because I know, because I am guilty of it. This thing here, Will distract you to a point where you can't be obedient because you can't hear. This thing here will distract you because you can't be sensitive because you're reading all of the garbage that's falling through it and believing the garbage of the world instead of the, the what man uh, what God's saying. The thing here will stop you from walking in faithfulness because it will distract you with the things of the world. And finally, this thing here will cause you not to believe God but to take man's advice instead of clinging to the presence of God. I say that to my own detriment. They're a wonderful tool. But they're only a tool. They are not our life. Pick up your son. 
obedience, sensitivity, obedience, sensitivity, not accepting defeat. You are the head and not the tail. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. And lastly, obedience, sensitivity, not accepting defeat, but walking in faithfulness and walking in the miracle. Do you need a miracle today? Whether it be in your family, whether it be in yourself, whether it be whatever, God wants to work a miracle in your life. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for him to do the miraculous? We're going to pray in just a moment. And then we're going to do some things that are a little different because the Lord spoke to me. Uh, Bill, come here and help me for a minute. I'm officially giving you... And Bob, come on, too. Officially giving you two a job this morning. And I say this because I, I, I mean this. For years, I had a man of God in this place who the first thing he would do when people had need would grab the oil. Bruce Teague Sr. And he began to pray. So guys, two of you take, go ahead and take it. And the two of you, would you guys anoint three people in this place this morning? Would you anoint Pat? And would you anoint Deb? And would you anoint Ron? Okay, and ask God, we're going to ask God for healing this morning. And, 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 and to do a work. Go, go ahead and do that this morning. Here's my Gehazi's eyes this morning. How many know that God's in this place to work miracles? To continue to work miracles. To de get, continue to do mighty things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah Rapha, fill this place with your presence. You know, you married too. This morning. Hallelujah. Thanks, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus. We are going to be obedient to your word. And Father, we're going to be sensitive to what you want to do. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we do not accept defeat, but we call on the name of the Lord. And we say we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. And Father, now we walk in faithfulness. And we walk in miracles. And we say, in the name of Jesus, we speak Jehovah Rapha upon those who you have anointed and upon those, Lord, who we don't know. Lord, right now in this place that need the anointing of the Lord, for those who are, are watching by video, we right now speak anointing to them. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> and Father, we will walk in faithfulness. And we will walk in miracles. And Lord, right now, we will not accept anything that the world says. But we will accept only the miracle working power of God. In Jesus' name. And as we are obedient, sensitive, not accepting defeat, and faithful. Thank you, Lord. 
for bringing about the miracle. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of you know the Holy Spirit's all over this place? Hallelujah. 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 Father, right now, Lord, for those we don't know in their situations, Lord, where they need healing right now, move by your Spirit. Lord, send those miracles their way also. Lord, you are not a respecter of persons, that miracles are available to each and every one of us. Your presence is, Lord, moving on every one of us. Father, let us be, as the song said, as we ended our worship, in the presence of Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, and Prince of Peace. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power and authority. Have your way in this place. In everything that we would do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You believe God can do it? I believe he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even. On this Mother's Day, I wanted to just let you know that we appreciate you. Come on back, Bill. Or, or, you don't need that one. Would you give the one and to every one of the ladies because even if they're not a mother, they mother us. And to the mothers, I would say, go, go ahead. I, uh, I thought about giving carnations and my cheapness arose in me when I heard the price of car carnations. And I started looking through and I, I, I seen this, there's a bookmark and a pen that I want for each one of the ladies, each one of the ladies to have this morning. Uh, you need more? There's six more. Um, but it says on the one side, amazing grace for a woman's heart happy mother's day but on the other side of that bookmark it says this and I, I would hope that you would take this heart we make promises all the time we make promises to ourselves to our families even to God unlike our human promises God's promise is eternal life in Jesus Christ it's sure he won't abandon you God's grace is now yours. Amazing grace. It is a gift of God. I want you to know that we only walk in the fact of amazing grace. We only walk in the fact of what God's doing. I would encourage you on this Mother's Day, hug your mom if you can think a lot. Boy, I wish one more time I could just hug my mom. You who have lost your mothers know what I'm talking about. Call them. If you can't hug them, call them. Tell them that you love them. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. Let your spirit move within our lives. Glorify yourself, Lord, in all that we think, that we say, and that we do. We thank you for your healing power that would flow over us this morning. 
Father, that your presence would always walk with us. That we would never, or that we would know that we never walk alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you need prayer, I'm here to pray. We're here to pray. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy the day. Whatever you do, moms, and have, have a blessed day in the Lord. Amen? Be dismissed this morning.